All right, so in the last video, I showed you how I actually carve the foam to create the initial shape that the holds are gonna be made out of. And the next step was to actually start to pour and make some molds so we can eventually cast those climbing holds. But I also hinted at this thing at the end. And I think I'm gonna spend just a quick second explaining what this is and maybe why you should consider making one as well if you're gonna pour silicone molds for climbing holds. All right, so this isn't anything super spectacular. It's just a board that keeps my working surface completely level for when we pour both the molds and cast the climbing holds. And it has essentially four legs made out of climbing bolts and they're just stuck in there with T-nuts. So I can actually rotate these bolts by hand to bring the level on each corner up and down. Um, and that's important to keep the back of the hold completely flat and level which means I'll have minimal finish work at the end to kind of sand the backs down, as well as it keeps the bolt hole perfectly perpendicular to the climbing wall. And I have to give a shout out here to Climber Dad. The idea of using just a simple T-nut here to um, change the level of these was actually uh, borrowed from him. I used to have the same thing essentially, but I used these inserted threaded nuts. But the problem was to adjust the board. I used to have to reach under here and try to spin the bolt or lift it up, adjust it slightly, put my level back on here to check level every single time. And then I came across a video where he just had these bolts with uh, T-nuts there and it works way better. But this is a super good idea if you're planning on making climbing holds because it gives you that level surface, like I said, as well as it allows you to have this extra piece of substrate down here um, that can be removed and thrown out once it's damaged or all gummed up. But also because it's this corrugated plastic, it's very rigid and sits very flat, but it also has a little bit of flex if you push on it hard enough, which means you can kind of pop up extra resin that might drip and get stuck on the board. It also allows you to peel up silicone easier. And again, because it's not porous, the silicone just sits on top of it and it's pretty easy to clean up. You can see there's a bit of a mess from previous holds I've made, but you know, I've made, I don't even know how many molds and casted a ton of climbing holds. And that's kind of all the damage and discoloration I have to show for it. So um, it's definitely helpful and you should think about maybe uh, making one. All right, so I got my board here all set up and I'm just gonna lay out all the things you should kind of have ready to go. A level, gram scale, depending on what silicone products you have. Mine is based on weight and it requires a gram scale to be accurate. Some of them is just like a 10 to one ratio or whatever it is based on volume. You can just use measuring cups, which is actually the next item I have here, which is a series of different kind of mixing and measuring cups. So I have these individual measuring cups as well as these smaller measuring cups, depending on how much silicone you're gonna be mixing. Some stir sticks, a pair of scissors, hand slash or a razor, rubber gloves for protecting your skin. And with that being said, everything should be done in a well-ventilated area, but I'm in a small garage and even in an open room, if they require you to be in a well-ventilated space, it probably means you don't wanna breathe it in. Grab a respirator. We'll get to why I have these later, but some bolts and slash or a piece of doweling will come in handy later. Compressed air, or again, if you have an air compressor, access to that. Similar to the bolts and the dowel, a nail that matches the diameter of your set screws, glue gun, and a butt tie, glue sticks. Your actual silicone products, I've also used Alumilite products. Whatever you can get that works uh, is probably fine for you. If you happen to be somebody that eats a lot of cereal, some cereal boxes really come in handy here. You can actually use a lot of the boxes that some of these materials come in. Essentially, any cardboard that has a laminated or glossy side to it, uh, that kind of works really well to keep your silicone in the mold box. But it also means that it's easy to take the forms off after you're done. And again, we'll get into all that. Last but not least, and I'll be careful handling these, uh, your holds. And there is everything that we need to get going on this. Now that I've put all this crap out here, I'm gonna collect it uh, and put it to the side and we'll get going um, laying out the holds and figuring out how we're actually gonna make these uh, molds. All right. All right, so 
So while I have my glue gun just behind me here, heating up, I think I'll explain these uh, bolts and this little bit of, of dowel. Basically, I've already pre-drilled the bolt hole here, but what I want is when I pour the actual molds themselves, I want there to be a vacancy where the bolt sits in the actual climbing hold. And I'm actually gonna get an old mold I've created just to kind of further illustrate why I do it this way. Here's a super old mold that I've used a bunch of times. You can see that the bolt hole here is actually part of the mold. Uh, and there used to be one on each one of these, but it ripped out after I used this mold too many times. So not creating molds of the bolt holds actually makes these molds last longer. Um, means you actually use less silicone, which as I explained earlier, is the most expensive part about making a climbing hold. So to make sure that these bolts will stand um, upright and in the right spot, I'm actually gonna thread these um, T-nuts, which are completely flat. They're ones without teeth, they're screw-on T-nuts. So they actually give like a flat base for the bolt to sit on. Using that bolt hole I drilled, I'm actually just gonna burrow this into the back of this shape. So now that I have that in there, I will thread it into that T-nut. And now I have a shape with a bolt hole already in it. And I will later put glue around the edge of this so the silicone doesn't leak into the bottom of the climbing hold. Uh, and that will also level out this little extra um, bit of surface I've added with that T-nut. As well with this guy. And lastly with this one. So with this piece of doweling, you can do the same thing. This is 3 eighths of an inch, so it's the same size as the, the hole you've drilled. The only problem with it is that the surface is porous and it has texture. It can cause some problems when you're trying to remove the mold. Um, and again, no piece of wood is completely straight and true. Um, so it's better to use these bolts because again, you can also use that T-nut kind of trick on the back of them to kind of keep these standing uh, completely perpendicular and upright in the shapes. So the next thing is to kind of create a layout um, and figure out how you want to arrange these to use the least amount of silicone as possible. Now this hole is a fair bit taller than these other two. These are about the same height and you know similar volumes. So I actually think I'm going to create a separate box for this one as well as there's a trick I'm going to show a little bit later when we get into the actual process of casting climbing holds. And then I'm actually going to group these two together because they're similar heights you can see as well as they kind of interlock each other so I can kind of use um, less silicone because I can put this in a single box and these share a wall between one another. The other thing to note too is that your wall thicknesses should probably be about say, I don't know, two centimeters to half an inch kind of depending on what measurement system you use, but it needs to be thick enough that it maintains its shape and has some structural integrity, I guess, but it also can't be too thick because then you won't be able to remove in cut parts of your hold and you'll end up kind of snapping and uh, shearing the mold, um, trying to flex it. I'm gonna kind of place these where I want them. I'll keep them kind of away from one another. And then I'm gonna come around the glue gun and actually glue these to this board so they don't shift at all. Uh, and then I'll start building the uh, box around it. Alright, so uh, clearly I like my protein and rich cereal and I have all these boxes. We're going to use these to make the mold boxes around the holds and it's pretty straightforward. You literally just get the scissors, cut these into strips, make sure they're at least the height of the, uh, the shape you've made and then just glue the crap out of it to make sure it's rigid enough that it can contain the silicone uh, and also that it's not going to leak silicone all over the place because when you pour this in it has a low viscosity so it just wants to spill out everywhere and obviously you don't want to waste it because this is the most expensive part and you also don't want to make a mess so we're going to build the boxes around these and that should just take a really quick second 
Now actually to make these boxes, you could use this corrugated plastic, but it kind of gets expensive and I don't know if it's really worth it. If you're actually casting bigger climbing holds, you might want to build a wooden mold box and that can sit on top or around a cardboard one as well. That's another reason to use these bolts because if you have a rubberized stem for where the bolt hole is, um, it's going to get flimsy the larger the, the hold is and the further it sticks up and then you're going to have a really crooked bolt hole that you cast so it's a good idea to use bolts for that. Again, if you're making a really big hold, you're going to want to not pour this much resin into the climbing hold. It's a bit of a waste of money and it's way more resin than you need so you do hollow backs if you've ever seen the back of a big climbing hold you know what i'm talking about it's that vacancy the negative space behind the hold and essentially you need to have um, an object or another kind of mold or shape that you can kind of submerge into the back of the hold and for that you want a rigid mold box so it doesn't shift and mess up your hold um, for casting. These aren't big enough that I really need to do that. Maybe I could do a little hollow back for this one to save a little bit of money, but there's actually a technique I wanna do for this climbing hold that I'm gonna show you guys later to make it a different shape as I cast the uh, resin and cast the climbing hold. So I'm not gonna do it for this one. All right, back to cutting cardboard. I totally didn't think this video was going to go this long but I wanted to include as much relevant info as I could. And well, here we are. So I got so caught up <laughs> in getting this going that I actually used the inside of the cardboard box on the inside of the mold. So I have the glossy side on the outside, which means I'll probably be left with cardboard and ugliness around the outside of my mold, but it's really not gonna affect it. It's just an aesthetic thing. Um, but yeah, keep your uh, your graphics of your box on the inside of your uh, your box you're creating. All right, so now I have these boxes kind of ready to go. There's just a couple last things before I actually get to mixing the silicone and pouring it into these spaces. The other thing is to make sure there's no strings of glue going into the box in the interior. I was pretty careful about that in the way I glue it around the outside. I use an excess amount of glue, but that makes sure that, you know, the majority of the structure is on the outside of it, and there's not a lot of glue on the inside. And then something I didn't do when I put these bolts in was I forgot to put my, my nails in my set screw uh, vacancies. So I'm just gonna do that now. And the purpose, it's the same thing as what the, the bolts are doing. They're uh, blocking the silicone from going in those holds. So you have those open in the final mold, which you'll see. And these don't need to be kind of as perpendicular and straight up as the bolts need to be because your set screws, again, can go in on a bit of an angle. You just don't want it going in on so much of an angle that it chews up the wall behind the hold. So now that I have it kind of ready to go, I'm gonna give it one last blast of this compressed air. So I wanna make sure that any debris on the foam is off of it because that texture, again, is super important in the end. One um, thing you don't need to have, um, I mentioned if you use the piece of dowel instead of these bolts, you need to grease it up and have some type of mold release to make sure that the silicone doesn't bond with it as well as the resin in the final stage. You can use something like this, which is a mold release. Um, just spray a little bit on just to make sure that, you know, again, those parts are easy to pull off um, after I pour the silicone. getting closer to the actual, I guess, final steps of this. I'm going to throw this on now because I'm going to start playing around with the silicone and I want to be safe. It'll just uh, take this off just for a second to talk. The silicone I'm using is a 10 to 1 ratio based on the weight so I'm gonna weigh out um, obviously 10 to 1 there's a two-part mixture and then start to pour in these molds now estimating how much I need for this I'm pretty 
bad at. Um, so I'm just gonna mix kind of what I think I need. I'm gonna pour probably the bigger mold, which is actually these two together first. And then anything I've left over, I'll start to add to this. The good thing is this has a working time of like half an hour. So even if I don't have enough, I can mix some more up and then add it to this. You wanna do it in a single pour, um, but it really won't affect it very much. Um, so I'm gonna start that way, mix a bunch up and just get to pouring them. I should also mention that's a good idea to keep your uh, glue gun hot and handy because uh, if by chance any of this leaks, you're going to want to fix that pretty quick. So don't unplug this yet, keep it hot uh, just in case. I think I have it really well sealed, so it shouldn't be a problem. two different colors and the idea is to mix it through so it's no longer marbled at all it's a consistent color and you want to get something that uh, you can use to mix it that has a flat edge so you can scrape all the sides and the bottom to ensure that you're mixing it all properly and the idea here is to pour it to one of the lowest points and just let it flow over everything don't try to cascade it across uh, the holes. That's better. <laughs> All right, so while those down there uh, start to cure, I'm gonna walk away for a bit and give it some time. And when we come back, I'll actually take the shapes out of the molds and hopefully get to pouring some holds. There's also one thing I forgot to mention, I figured I'd mention now, is that if you have any scrap pieces of silicone left over or from an old project, you can actually cut those into like cubes and drop them into the volume of your uh, pour to kind of make up for any lack of uh, silicone that you have to make up that volume. As long as it doesn't really touch your shape and doesn't get in the way, that's the one precaution, but maybe it's a more environmentally friendly thing and a bit of a cost saving technique. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. And we'll see you in the next one when we actually start to make some climbing holds. So see you then.